Thank you, ladies. 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 Um, yes, uh, thank you. You're gonna give us an update on the uh, water treatment plant, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, as you we talked in the past meetings, I've been fighting some uh, some issues with water quality down there, uh, groundwater runoff, yeah, yeah. Stuff such as that. This one, yeah. Thank you, sir. Can you just say a prayer? So I've been having some water quality issues. Uh, my December numbers come back better than my November because um, we've been testing monthly, trying to keep keep up with it, keep an eye on what's going on, as well as maybe some operational processes at the plant to really have increase our contact time or having the peroxide. So. Long story short, we did not meet um, the the standards in December. So I sent out the first uh, the January bill. I had to send out a public notice stating what the situation was and everything that, that failed. It was just one particular item. Now, with that being stated, I did a preliminary last week, another test, because I've been trying to test it and test it and test it and see if our operational uh, practice is helping. Did another test, we fell under. So we're anticipating next month when we do our official lab test, we're going to be well within parameters. And the operational process of giving more contact time has really, really changed and really helped. And so I want to kind of give everybody an update. Now, I heard in the meeting uh, at Fort White Monday night, y'all were changing some sand out, the green sand or something. <laughs> I'm looking at the beginning. I'm looking, uh, so the, the the plant down at Fort White has a grain sand filtration system and a carbon filtration system. The grain sand filtration system has never been changed out since 1998. That is the first line of defense in the in the uh, filtration system, so to speak. I'm looking into trying to get right, change out that green sand. Last year, we changed out the carbon, which really made a difference to help the water quality. Now we're thinking if we can change out the green sand as well as our operational practices, we should increase water quality. Now, Stacy, whenever we get the water from Ellisville online in Fort White, we get the line run, will it still go through this filtration system in Fort White? Yes, sir. It will. Yes, sir. Okay. It'll still be filtrated through the filtration system in Fort White. So that's, that's another reason we want to go ahead and upgrade it with the town's blessing, the council's blessing. Um, to uh, help our filtration system overall. Now, obviously, coming from Ellisville, the water quality is going to be considerably better. So it, it will not need as much uh, polishing, so to speak, but from operational practices, you want to do the best you can. All right. Any questions on that? And we're still expecting that water line to be on. Be finished up sometime by uh, September of next year. Is that or this this year? Is that correct? September. Ricky can speak on that a little bit better. But uh, from what I understand, me and Ricky were talking, it should be ready to put out the bid sometime late February. Is that still? Are we still on track for that? Yeah, yeah. We hope to. Uh, <coughs> we hope to have uh, final the last of the permit. Some permitting is underway. A little bit more left to get submitted. But we hope to have that permitting underway by the end of uh, this month, as well as uh, the 90 percent uh, design drawings that you y'all can look over. And then, um, so if that stays on schedule, if we still are looking at uh, 12 to 15 months construction period, then yeah, I would say September. Let's just say fall of 2024. We should be online. I expect. We're I'm thinking 12 to 15 months to run that line. Well, there's that line as well as, well, it's a 10 mile run. Somebody, I think, mentioned six miles last week, last time. It's actually more like 10 miles, but there's also 
going to be some rechlorination facilities along the way. So they'll they'll require some land acquisition, possibly as well as uh, uh, you know the, the building and the equipment for that. Rock, we're, 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 uh, we able to stay on all county and state right away. Now have to purchase right away. Yes, sir. No, we're we're with the line itself. But you just said they might have to be some land acquisition for the next report. You can hold away one of our producers. That's the first I've heard that. Yeah, the, the, the installation, Commissioner Williams, the installation of the line itself is all on public right of ways. All except for two little strips, one <coughs> across Brad Dick's property is at his realty building, building. And uh, that's not a problem, of course. Uh, and then he's talking to the hardware store owner about um, using a 20 foot utility easement across the south property line of his property. He's already said it's not a problem. It's all going to be underground anyway. He won't. He won't even know it's there. That's probably about the plan. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In the town of Fort Walker, right always get very narrow in there, so we got to have a little bit extra room there to work. But all the rest of it's either town property or public right away along 18 and 441. What will consist of these chlorination? What What, what will that actually be? Probably a uh, uh, hypochlorite liquid hypochlorite system uh, with a meter and pumps and fluoride residual analyzers. And, uh, and that'll be a that that building, you said? Yes, sir. It'll, well, it'll be a small building. Uh, probably four or five dog house. Yeah, and with a bed. Four or five dog house. Four or five dog house. Yeah. But we're not talking about a lot of property we got to retain then. No, sir. Uh, it, it'll, it'll be a third the size of this room. If yeah. not even probably a quarter the size of this room. And there's no pumping equipment really. I mean, it can it'll stay under, it'll stay fresher the whole time. So, by the way, if I can just uh, sidetrack for a second, I we uh, appreciate all y'all's sentiments and condolences uh, regarding the loss of Bob. So you know he's he's left a hole in our hearts and a hole in our and our, our business a little bit, but we're working to to kind of uh, fill that. We'll be likely bringing on some people pretty soon. Uh, we've already hired a couple of young engineers um, in the last uh, few months, and I'll introduce Trevor Noyes. Noyes, Noyes. I never know how to say his name, but <laughs> Trevor's, a, Trevor's a recent Florida grad who, uh, I guess, a Gilchrist County boy. So we're equal opportunity employers. <laughs> uh, so Trevor's going to be uh, helping us in our uh, uh, water resources area where I and Bob and, and Tori have been have been you know fixated. So, did you want to make a big speech or anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we have three people now in our office that are over six six. So. <laughs> It is a new employment standard. I'm, I must have got in right under the like, like Indiana Jones, you know, just you know, grab my hat right now. <laughs> okay, well, let's uh, let's move on to the test wheel update. I guess there's nothing back on it yet. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, just yesterday, I uh, received word from Scott. Sigler, our uh, hydrogeologist, um, they had sampled, was it last, early last week? Or, no, the week before last, I think, toward the end of the week, they had finally got the generator going, ran the well for a day or two, just like normal protocol, like they've all done with the other two test wells. Took his samples, they still got a whole panel waiting to hear back, but he did get a few results. And the very good news is the arsenic is down. Um, the, uh, the the federal standards for arsenic in public water supply, I think, is ten parts per billion. It used to be fifty. Now it's ten parts per billion, and these were coming up back. I believe he said three and a half parts per billion. But what was what, those fifty parts per billion at this location? I think that was a nationwide standard. Okay. But I, I may not be exactly accurate, but. 
The current, the current DEP standard is 10 for arsenic. And we're at three with this well. The I read that he did a split sample, one filtered, one not, or whatever. I don't know exactly the particulars, but there were two two samples came back almost right on the money, both of them. We got good water. We got water. That's the good news. We got we believe we got good water at the, at the right depth and all. Uh, he he measured I think iron, dissolved solids, and then he's got some other parameters he's waiting to hear back on. But so far everything's looking really good. So. You know, if you think about how this how this has played out, you know, we were right next to the DOC facility downstream of them from what we know of the groundwater conditions. We got the really hot sample. We moved another mile or so towards the sheriff's office, got a better sample, but still high, but it was an order of magnitude less. And then third time's a charm, got east of the facility, upstream, so to speak. And uh, knowing that, of course, the, the fire college sample, even though it may not have been a perfect sample, it was a, it was something to start with. It, it came back clean, and now we got a clean one right where we want our well field. So we're all real, you know, split better last night after hearing that. Mm -hmm. So I'll share, I'll share with uh, Stacy and all the some of the lab results as soon as. Um, the rest of them get in, but but that's what we're finding out at, at this that point. Is, uh, from, yes, sir. Greg, uh, what are, <laughs> what are the DEP is doing to to investigate that area for the house? My, my understanding is they contacted DOC. DOC hired a testing firm of their own. Uh, they went out and pulled samples. They came up with to me some contradictory statements. Uh, DOC is obviously trying to say they don't have, they're not part of the problem. They're not causing the problem. Uh, so that was their goal. Um, the, the testing aid, uh, firm said it would take, quote, I was told, was a million years for it for that order to get from the DOC. Down to our test well. Well, 100, I think, was the number. But 100 years. Might as well be a million. <laughs> anyway, it'll take some long time, but that uh, the water that was being drawn out in the test well, um, the, the way the test wells were done, or was causing the problem, or the yeah, test wells, that the uh, well driller created those problems. But it's like if, if it took 100 years for it to flow from there, but then we can't suck that, that bad water out. So we pump them for one, two, three days before we pull a sample, but we can't pull the water out, the bad water out. You know, if he's creating that bad water, it ought to be pulled out either. So me, those two statements don't don't match up. They contradict ourselves. But in, in I think the water management district is interested in, in trying to pull some samples as well. Um, but that's as far as I know. <laughs> I don't we don't know, by the way. If that testing firm that the Department of Corrections hired, we don't know if they actually sampled anything. They didn't sample from our wells. From what I understand, the uh, Geosyntec was the consulting firm DOC hired. They um, they analyzed our test results and they did not pull their own samples. The district went out and pulled new samples about a week and a half ago. Uh, David King is supposed to let me know when those samples come back. I had a meeting, I had a uh, spoke with Neil Hornick. He is the chief geologist for Jacksonville DEP. He um, he is trying to get me a copy of the Geosyntec uh, that consultant's uh, report. Report, and uh, we are all David, Neil, myself. We're all going to have a get together probably the first of next month when the results that David sent out come back because uh, we all want to get on the same page. But didn't their methodology differ from our methodology? Their methodology was uh, five gallons per minute, which is basically taking surface water. And uh, if, if there was no runtime, it was five gallons per minute. So they just turn it on, to the cup, grab it, took a sample. Whereas yeah, the water and water basement took the sample from our room. Yeah. Which yeah. is not sufficient. Not sufficient. 
which won't be a problem if it comes back clean. It just it won't necessarily tell us anything conclusive, but at least it'll be one more small data point, I guess, that you you know take it for what it's worth. I would be more comfortable if they followed the same methodology. Absolutely. I'm most comfortable with what we just found out yesterday. Let's <laughs> <laughs> talk about it. Well, no, I was just going to say. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Just, just to finish that up, uh, and and we'll know if we get their report, I suppose. But I don't know if Geocentec did any sampling at all, or did they just do a kind of a desktop study or some sort of a model? Um, if they did sample, it was only from a well or monitor well or something that might have been already at the at the prison site. But again, we don't we don't know for sure. So. Okay. All right, Lake Carter Plan for Ellisville. Yes, sir. So uh, right. before we get started on that, I need I want to bring up something about that. I know David's heard about it there. I, I, everybody knows I'm in the sector business, or I was. My son and all, everybody's still in the sector business. Dumping septic waste has become a big problem. A big problem. Right now, there's one facility that takes everybody set each in this area. And, you know, it's, it's just become, it's a monopoly. It's a monopoly, I'll just say it. <laughs> city, the city don't seem to be interested in addressing this issue at all. Uh, saying that, what would it take for us to be able to take septic choice at Ellisville? And I know, I know our new facility when we get it built, we're supposed to be able to take septic out there. Or oh, work the word that. But I want to look at what it would take to do septic at Ellisville, even if we have to limit it right now to so many gallons per day or whatever that we take. But we're gonna to have to address this issue sooner or later. It is it is so it is a problem. <clears throat> D, from what I can understand, DEP has set has set the levels on phosphorus so high for land spreading operations that you can't meet their requirements. So you know that was a. Here's your we've looked we've looked at we we looked at the possibility of even doing a, you know several companies getting together and doing a, a, a like a, a land spread operation you know by but. From all the information we're getting, it's impossible to meet the phosphorus levels for DEP for land spread. So you're saying that, you know. Here's your challenge at Ellis at Ellis. <coughs> 25 to 50 to 75,000. And we're so limited right now, I completely understand what I would recommend we do is search for any geographical area. To do this up, but if, if you're going to try to concentrate at Ellisville, the yeah. challenge you have is you're maxed out before you, you're on the second phase. We just broke around this week. Right. If you recall, we did an amendment to the current contract to go to 75,000 gallons. So you're very limited on capacity. That's the reason we did the supplemental to go to 75,000. Make sense? Yeah. So I don't know what volume you're talking about, but I mean, are you are you saying construct a different facility? I I, I I don't know. I'm looking I'm looking at anything we what any any solution to this problem we can we can look at different solutions. I don't I am not saying look at any one solution. I got you. But at some point we're gonna have to address this with DEP or with trying to fix it ourselves within the county with with a with you know. I know. I think we'll have the problem fixed once we get the, the you know, plant online at the North Carolina Bay Industrial Park, hopefully. But I can tell you, I wouldn't be surprised if you're not looking at easily 25,000 gallons a day that you could take right now get from septic. Easily take 25,000 gallons. I mean, you would have that right now. Now, it would, you know, naturally we wouldn't be able to do it for free. But I mean, you know, right now, I, I, it's fourteen cent a gallon. 
to go. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, I mean, we're, we're we're having to go up on pump outs just to try to pay for dumping, and it's got to the point now where a lot of people can't afford the pump outs. I mean, it's it's, it's crazy what we're having to charge for a pump out, and most of the problem is the cost of dumping the waste. And it's like I said, it's a monopoly, and basically, you know, they can charge what they want to charge because you have no other option to go but to go there. And, and I ain't saying he's making get rich. I don't know his business. You know what I'm saying? But I do know 14. It was four cent a gallon less than less than uh, five years ago. And that was fourteen cent a gallon. Greg, do you have somebody on board to uh, do some research? My, my concern is this, and I think it's still valid. We both did this several years ago. Out at the land, you know, we have a certain area for emergency purposes. Remember, it's Chris Williams? Mm -hmm. Percentage. But it's a big, glorious act. The DEP does not like it. But they, something happened several years ago, and I went through and got an exceptional permit only for emergency use. So we do have an emergency place at the land building. But it's it's not fond of. We, we, can, we can certainly handle that. The, the issue with septage is the strength of it when you get it. Um, if you can dilute it enough so there's nothing up to set your plant, if you just dump it into the plant, turn it over. It, it, yeah, it's gonna kill the plant. Right. So what is the what is the what is how do you dilute it? So, I mean, the, 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 well if you've got you've got enough other domestic flow where you know you can inject that stream at a you know 20 percent or 15 percent of what your overall flow is then yeah, that was built most of your flows commercial. You diluted. Well, it's still domestic. Well, we call it domestic. Okay. Yeah. It, it's not the land use per se. It's what generates the waste. You know, if it's if it's bathroom waste at Walmart, that's still domestic. Okay. Uh, when you start talking about commercial industrial, that's somebody doing you know some sort of chemical process that they want to put it in your system or or whatnot, or they're doing a meat packing plant. A meat packing plant will kill a plant too. You end up with a lot of sodium in there a lot of times, and and it will kill your plant. So, well, this this is a problem right now for the whole state. It's not just our, it's, it's not limited to our area. I'm telling you, this is a problem for the whole state right now. And uh, there's a path forward to look at the cost. Obviously, the more general waste you have, like where you can dilute it, you probably need a a, a, a holding vessel of some sort, whether it be a, a tank or whatever that you can. Put that in and then meter it into your plant at a controlled rate, not just you know have the, the truck pull up there and start dumping it in the plant. That that typically doesn't work. Greg, I've been doing a little research and uh, you know some people down in Polk County and all they're doing what they call dewatering, where basically they're dumping it into these um, it's almost like roll off containers, what it looks like, but the water the water comes out the bottom. So basically. They're taking everything, all the solids out of it. Mm -hmm. And they, they, then they run that through a screw, squeeze the water out of it after it's in water. And uh, basically, then they're left spreading just the water and all this other stuff they're hauling to the landfill. Now, uh, I, I, and I don't know if, if that's something, I guess I need some I need more information on, or we need more information on what's the best way to handle this. And what we can do to handle it. It sounds like they got drying beds where they're drying it out and yeah. you know, they're taking the solids and then they're, and they're better where you can compost those solids actually uh, and make it just straight landfill material. Um, uh, so, but all that comes with the cost. We just got to look at it and see what's going to be, you know, how much waste do you think, you know, you indicate what you think the, the daily flow would be there, but. You know, is is that going to be on a regular basis? Is that you know, twenty four seven? Is that you know, certain times of the year? That kind of thing. But we just need to look at it, and then like out here at the industrial park, initially we may not have a whole lot of domestic flow. And, and, and it's also going to need to, or uh, uh, you know, we might want to address it. We're going to need to be able to handle grease with this system too. You know, so. We're requiring them to pump out these grease traps, and really, you're limited to where you can dump them once you pump the grease traps. So that's the problem, also. You know, it's, um, 
We're going to follow all this stuff. We've got to find the solution for it also. And we're going to get rid of it when you dump it. Well, where's the grease being? The, the last time I heard it was going to Jacksonville as far as those grease. Uh, he's taking some grease out here, but he's got a machine that runs through to separate the grease out of the water, supposedly, before he. Uh, I mean, there's equipment you can buy that separates the grease out of the, you know, from the water, and then you dispose of the grease separately. Right. Uh, we, we, uh, our, our uh, sewer treatment plant at the mega site, uh, Are we talking about opening up the dumping of separate waste to everybody or just our local, just Columbia County? That, that, they got something we have to decide. We have to decide anything. Just, just let us back up in time. I'm going to guesstimate a decade ago. I was called going when the city cut everybody off. What Greg indicated a while ago. They said that the plant got turned upside down because they banged the septic collar, mauled the city of Lake City. That's been at least a decade ago. That, that time, when I went and had our DEP permit to install a waste facility landfill, modified for emergency permit. My knowledge, we never took a pound of it. Somehow it worked itself out. But I've heard from many other folks in the septic tech business in the last year saying this problem is getting worse and worse and worse. But Commissioner Williams bring you up to speed down in Ellisville. If you recall, we got a 25,000 gallon per day plant, right? Mm -hmm. We knew we had to expand it to 50,000. No more than the time we got a permit pulled to do the expansion, the growth hit where we have to go to 75,000 gallons. We're chasing our tail right now, trying to keep up. So it would not even be reasonable to assume you can enter anything in this system because we're buying eight ball. Which is a good thing. It's very strong. Correct. But, uh, Mr. Ford, I'm very aware of it. It sounds like it's getting worse. Well, I, guess, I mean, you know, here's what's happening now. The price is, you know, the price is one thing. But you've got haulers coming from Keystone, Star, Jacksonville. So this is out here. He can only take so much. So we've got days. And he's putting on the ground, right? Yeah, but still, yeah, he's got to treat it, and he can only dump so much a day, and is he godfathered in? Is he grandfathered in? Yes. You cannot do that anymore. Okay. You can do it if you can meet the phosphorus requirement. Yeah. <laughs> They've got the phosphorus requirement so high. See, he's exempt from meeting those requirements. Any new facility has to meet these Be requirements. Good. And he's the only facility grandfathered in. That takes it. That takes other, other. Now, he's not the only facility running right grandfathered in, but all the other ones are smaller sites that basically they can just handle their own. Right. But, but what we're having a problem with now, too, is sometimes we have to leave a load on our truck to the next day to try to dump it. So we, we can't do any more pump out that day because we're the truck full and we have nowhere to get rid of, you know, just uh, well, well, I know that uh, it's a nightmare when you start dumping at the landfill. So the only hot well we got now is where we used to dump stuff at that. And that's why we end up having to put old monitoring wells on the west side of the landfill. That's why the DEP's not following yeah. and, and I'm just bringing it to the attention that something, you know, we've got to. It's just something the city refuses to do. And, you know, they might have reason. I, I, I don't know. Because I, I, I will tell you, I do know other, other, other municipalities won't take it at their, at their treatment plants also. So, I mean, it's it's not it's not a problem just that City Lake City has. I mean, they, uh, and the ones that will take it, Gainesville will take some, but they only take so much a day and they hey, they're more than, and you can't afford it up there. I mean, it's, they're outrageous. I mean, they're hiring, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's a problem and it's a problem Tyler has going to have to address at some point because I can tell you there's several separate things still in the state of Florida that, and they all require a pump. And it's a it's an issue. It's, it could be a real problem finding somewhere to dump. Uh, I'm just putting it on our radar. We need to start looking at this problem too because even if we do say, you know, you got to pump here, we're only going to sell it. 
pump in Columbia County. Well, uh, or from haulers inside Columbia County. I don't know how you do that, but uh, we might have to limit it so many gallons per day or something. You know, you might end up doing something like that, but uh, still it's got to be addressed. <coughs> Jim Ford, how we do that, I don't know. Uh, we tried to address it ourselves, but we're, we're not getting anywhere. I mean, we were trying to buy some property, or I have some property that I thought about trying to get permitted and stuff, but I I can't, I can't find anybody that can show me how to meet these phosphorus levels. And if you do meet the phosphorus levels, you can't afford it. You know, you can't, you can't afford to build it. Well, I'll put a number to it. I expect if the county was to get into that business, it's still probably going to be more than what that gentleman's charging the land apply because he's grandfathered in. But we're going to have some of the same requirements we still got. But even if you have to charge more, you'll have more to go. Well, yeah. Yeah. See, right now, Right now, sometimes you don't have anywhere to get rid of. And you get more and more people coming over here to dump because they're running out of places to pick up. Greg, wouldn't the logical thing to do is do a cost model at the Inner Motor Park? Wouldn't that be it? I think the Inner Motor Park's going to be the, I think the quickest, quickest way to get there uh, for the county. Um, as Kevin talked about down at Ellisville, we're, we're, we're kind of you don't have to we're chasing our tail trying to catch up now, man. <laughs> and and all so uh the motor park will be closer to coming online the soonest but it will require some modifications to get set up to be able to do that i think greg refresh my memory what was the additional cost to do the h8 disposal on the million dollars at that plant i mean i know you, I know you didn't do this out but i remember it was about a million, million four. So that, out in the motor market, you got a call, similar clients on our EHA disposal. We had one facility we were taking it to, and they cut us off out of nowhere one day. We had to take it to another location. I think it doubled and called the uh, disposal of it from the landfill. That's why we re retrofitted the plant that we're currently getting ready to build with other in the park now to accommodate our EHA, right? I recall that was a million dollar modification, but in the long run, we will make all our money back this run. It's primarily tainted. And, and and even this, I mean, you know, people will pay to dump it. You're going to have to charge to dump it, you know, so it ain't like you're doing it without no revenue source yeah. coming, you know. But that's what I refer to as a business model. You know, what what, what it costs to build, what do you charge for it? Is it reasonable? Right. Exactly. I mean, we need to put the numbers to it and see what what's going to cost. I mean, that's what you're doing at the airport right now. Would the same? Would it? I mean, if they don't treat the EHH, the EHH, however you say that, from the landfill, would it treat septic waste or leaking or that? Because this is going to be slowly. What I learned about it. Well, that's what Greg said. You'd have to introduce it. Right. You know, that's, right. that's why you have to have the big holding tanks so you can bring it out. Not much at a time. Right. Yeah. But it's, since we, it's, since it's, that's been done, it, it's going to be much cost effective than to see whatever tweaks need to be done to that system because we're talking similar type stuff, to be honest with you. So, Very true. But again, percentage of your total flow. Yes. You, know, you have to make sure that you have enough flow to handle it. Or you, or you end up doing some pre treatment to it mm -hmm. to control your pH and your other, other factors that would kill your. They'll kill your plant otherwise. Or you do a equalization tank mm -hmm. with aeration, and then you gradually, because it's like he says, the same stuff, it's just concentrated. So you just have to dilute it back. So, Commissioner, if this one guy goes out of business today, what happens? We shut down. Nobody pumps your septic tank. Nobody pumps that tank. Exactly right. Well, that or some of the septic tank is going to cost you. $1,500 each time. How about you can't charge it if you have nowhere to dump it? Yeah. Well, you're going to be hauling it. Are you going to haul it too? So, they're going to be somewhere. They don't have anywhere to take it around right here. Right. We have nowhere else to take it right now. Where's the next geographic? Where's the next facility? We don't have one. I mean, maybe South Florida. So you're saying multiple counties go to this one facility? We have people from Bradford, uh, Keystone. 
they're holding it all with it to out here to Swanee County now, from from Columbia County, uh, Baker County, uh, uh, Keystone, Bradford County. Uh, I think you need to understand there's a concerted effort. It might not be public, but there's a concerted effort at Tallahassee to do away with septic tanks. They are pushing that. They might not be direct and in your face about it, but they're creating regulations every day to make it harder and harder and harder to handle waste with septic tanks. Well, how in the world are you going to live late? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. You're going to grant to run those lines up. Good for you. One of the reasons they didn't prove that when well, you had to pump your neck thing in five years and did all that. Because they didn't, we, we didn't have nowhere to go all that way. Yeah, but they bring a lot of them rules back up again this session. They try and pass them. It, it, it's, it's, it's right back up. I know, but that's what South, I mean. South Florida's driving a lot of this, and North Florida don't have a big enough voice to counteract it. And a lot of our a lot of our boards, to be honest with you, at Canada will don't realize it's going on. Banks are requiring it when you sell a house. It, it, it's pumped before uh, they'll approve the law. Exactly right. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Most, most oh, bank a lot of, lot of banks are plenty of institutions. You have to pump the septic tank before they'll approve the law. We have to do a tank inspection. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That inspection is pumping the tank. Grain build inspection, the whole nine yards has to be done. That's what's going it's like I won't be a bit like a building. You're buying a house. Next few years, you got to have a five or ten acre lot before you can have a seven acre. How do you build a house up in the country? You got to have five or ten acres. <laughs> As long as you're on five or ten acre land, you can probably put a seven tank in. Well, even right now, you know, if you build a house on an acre lot or less, if you're in the Beavis area, you have to do the nitrogen reduction. You got to do a special set. See, that's what I, I was shocked when I when I started doing this research. I thought nitrogen was the big deal, but now phosphorus is, is what's holding it all up. Uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Fella, put double wide, get started up, or single wide in the middle of the country. That's picture me over. Yeah. Right now, Wakulla County, you got to put in about a fifteen thousand dollar system, or you don't. You don't put a septic tank in. Yeah, they don't cry. They don't. They don't allow any septic tank. No matter if it's on a, you can have 150 acres out there. It don't matter. They don't require. You have to do a nitrogen reduction system. So, in Wakulla County. So, but anyway, I want to bring that to our attention. That's something we have got to address here in Columbia County. And I've got. I mean, you know, this last time, from what I can, what I can understand, you usually he'd go up a penny or two cent. This last time, he jumped up like six cent at one time. You know, a gallon. And you start, you know, and that don't sound like a lot, six cent a gallon. But when you're talking about uh, two thousand gallons on a truck, you know, that's, that, that, that adds up quick. Very good. Unfortunately, you're not the engineer on the, on the mega site sewer treatment plan. Uh, hearing this conversation, is there a way to address the importance of modifying that system to be able to treat more separate tank waste? Yes, sir. I believe so. And it, I, I, again, I think that's going to be probably the quickest way for the county to be able to address it is, is at that plant there because we do have, I, I say we got our contractor for the plant. Right, construction we're, meeting as we speak. We're, we're, we're moving ahead with that. So, so that's imminent. Um, it's already been modified to handle leachate. So I think that would be the most efficient way for the county to address it, not knowing the details of it, but. I think some of those components may already be in place for you already. Commissioner Williams, to answer your question, the initial design, it was not a very hard process to modify the handle for the heat tank. It was just the cost of doing it. So I can only reasonably assume you can do the same thing here. I think the key to lock is, is the business model of it. Right. Yes, sir. Before you go forward with it, 
you have to determine. Now, here, Mr. Ford say, if you have to have it, you have to have it. But what I think I'm hearing in the room is Greg said, by the time you get through with what is the business model, it might exceed what you're talking about, you're currently doing. But then again, if you have to have a place to do it, it is what it is. That's what I'm saying. The cost is what the cost is. At the end of the day, you still have to have a place to right. go. Whatever the cost is, you've got to have a place to go. Right. You know? And uh, even if it is a little bit more than what he's charging out there, if you got sitting there with a load of trouble customers need to pump out, you got to go double. You know what I'm saying? So, Stacy, if you don't mind, get your engineer of record and Greg together as it relates to what we're currently doing out there. And let's just come up with some idea before we can get started. Please, then move on. Fair. Yeah, that's great. Greg, one thing I would like for y'all to look at too on the landscaping part. Right now, it's 1,500 gallons of flow per day you can boot up per acre on landscaping. 15 gallons per 1,500 gallons per day. It seems logical to me if you had enough land, if you cut that down to 800 gallons a day or 500 gallons a day, would that lower the phosphorus rate on that on that land? I, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a, I don't know how to figure that or anything. But of course, the less you do it, the less, the less uh, phosphorus load you're going to put on that on that property. And that's my question. Can you get approval for dumping less than, less gallons per day per acre if you to meet that requirement or something like that? I, I, I don't know. It's, I need more information on that. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get all the information, but it's hard to uh I mean I I don't know. The way those the, the way that permit would work is you've got to demonstrate that you're not going to violate that standard. And you can you can achieve that by a number of different ways. You can you can turn pre-treat it to do that, or you know, depending on what the concentration of your Effluent is, we could do it by the quantity of that effluent. It's kind of like if I can, if I, if I can only, if I only got one gallon jug and I only fill it half full, then I ain't ever float it. But if I try to put two gallons in that one gallon jug, I'm going to overflow it. All right, well, I just want to bring that up. Okay, we're going to have to, that's going to be, uh, that's, that's, that's a problem now, and it's getting to be more and more of a problem every day, I can tell you. Because I know we are putting the sewer in, but they're still putting septic tanks in every day also. And I, and I would admit they're probably putting more septic tanks in a day than you're taking septic off the sewer per day. So the septic tank is still it's a problem. Um, okay, uh, let's move on down to number five. Or, it was built to uh, water, water, water line verbal. Yeah, I'm just going to talk. I think we already discussed it. We already asked. Uh, so hopefully the bid will be out. Uh, okay. All right. So we've addressed that rate back up. Yes, sir. So, everyone, so I have a utility rates presentation. On the first page, it's just kind of a general synopsis of what we've already discussed. Um, budget. That's it. What we're doing, and uh, I put a couple slides in here just for water weight comparisons. I got residential, and commercial, as you can see. Ellisville Fort White are considerably different on the residential, and Ellisville Fort White is considerably different on the commercial side. Um, the page uh, on fees. So, because they're because the rate structures are so different. And you have two different entities. Um, I'm trying to converge everything to make it standardized across the county. And so the fees here are just some of the things that I would like to mix and match from each unit. Um, so Fort White had some very good things. Ellisville had some very good things that I think as a county we can blend and make it universal across the board, all the way down where everybody and all the constituents can have a have a good say. Um, you know, senior Ellisville has a senior uh, base rate discount. Well, why didn't have a senior citizen base rate discount? But stuff like that, I want to keep 
forward to the future and, and kind of combine them into one. Um, so that, that was just kind of a synopsis of some of the different feed that one has, one doesn't, and how we can blend them together to make it uniform. Now that's not indicative of all the feeds, they're not indicative of everything, it's just a snapshot of, hey, we're trying to mix and match and get everything fair and consistent across the board for everybody. Um, and then the last page is two slides, it just kind of goes over, if, if we raised the commercial uh, rate in Ellisville. Um, last month, I think the board we discussed and the directive I had was we were going to uh, increase the residential in Ellisville to match Fort White rate. So Fort White residential rates are going to be the standard to the town. Um, we were not going to raise the rates in Fort White per the <coughs> water association. We were going to put a pause on that until we can get consistency and a rate study done later down the road. Um, commercial rates in Fort White are not going to change. They're going to stay the same. But we were looking at increasing the commercial rates in Ellisville slowly and steadily over the next few years to match for white so people do not take a big hit uh, immediately. It's just going to be a gradual increase over time. So the two pages you have, one is a 10% commercial increase and one is a 50% commercial increase in Ellisville. Um, as you can see, the residential, since we're, it's, it's staying the same, it's about, uh, about $2,000 residential is what Ellisville's residential rates will go up from the year um, if we match full life. Very minimal increase. Um, but the 50% commercial in Ellisville, as you can see, the sum of the old charges will be around $48,000 if we increase 50% on our commercial, just our commercial rates in Ellisville. We'd increase our revenue stream about forty-eight thousand dollars. If we do a ten percent increase, you're looking at around eleven thousand uh, dollars. My, my, I guess I brought this up. I was looking for direction from the board to um, tell me which way they would like me to go because I would eventually like to take this to Board of County Commission to see if I could get approval for a rate increase commercially in Ellisville. Then that would allow me to start the process of making it consistent across the board for the entire county. Then we can budget next year to do a rating uh, rate study from an independent contractor. To let us know, okay, what is the valuation of our infrastructure? How much is, what's it going to take to be preventive predictive maintenance, the you know, capital outlays. So now, okay, we can be consistent for all, for everyone throughout the county. It need to be consistent. Yes, sir. It would need, need to be. I, I can remember back in the old, in the old days that uh, when we talked about the property appraisal, uh, the biggest thing was then, uh, take country clubs, for example, you have houses of the same 12 foot inch, basically built alike, and there was so much difference between house A and half, house B, and uh, uh, it was a big deal in the early 80s. Consistency, and I believe in consistency. If if if, if it's consistency, then uh, nobody complains. Nobody can say, "Well, why is it this and for why and why am I paying more here?" If it's consistent, then nobody have a right to complain. Yes, and I like the idea of, of bumping it up gradually so you meet that same uh, 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 price that you have in Fort White. Yeah, I, th I think your plan. What we talked about earlier. I guess we're it right now. I guess we're requesting uh, this board to recommend moving forward with the two commissions. The town and the board. And the board, yes, council. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Stacey on page six. <laughs> I don't want to offer him commercial. How do you go from oh, that, 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 that's missing. That's supposed to be a one zero two. It's a typo. One zero two is a type of? Yeah, uh, if you look uh, at some of the old charges. You got two thousand nine hundred fifty nine dollars. That number is it's incorrect. One zero nine is two thousand. Yeah. Okay. 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 I think it makes sense. Okay. I apologize. Uh, Fifty percent sounds like a lot, but if you look at individual customers, straight dollar basis, it's really not significant. 
So are we saying we're going to go with a 50% vote? Well, I'm asking the board to... to, to well, I think what you, that would be my recommendation. You have yeah. thoughts. 50 and 10. I think we need 50 and 10. I mean, it's, no, that's, that's just, that's that would be my recommendation. With the 50%. All residential at Fort White rates and raise the Ellisville commercial rates 50%. Right. So, thank you, everybody. On the same way. Everybody, Residentially, they'll be exactly the same. Commercially, Fort White will still be higher, but they will not increase this year. Ellisville will do a slight increase. It's pennies on the gallon, per se. And over time, we can continue to... Even if they still get a deal over Fort White. Oh, considerably, yes. Yeah. Look it's fairly cheaper than any of our competitors. Right. Exactly. So is this committee reasonable to go yeah. to the town and the board? And then we'll do a rate study next year and we'll get the we'll prepare that for the next agenda. Yeah. And that yeah. can be on the I guess the town fort would it would the town fort what have to would be changing the rates in fort. We're not moving any. So the only thing we need to bring well, how about we get put for the board county commission. So the only thing we would need to bring to Fort White would be any changes to the fee schedule. Yes. But in terms of their rates are not changing, so it would not, it would just have to come before our board because we're changing house rates. I agree. That's easy enough to do for six Yes. Okay. Huh. Hey, you got your uh, rates? Is Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anything else anybody want to talk about? Greg, you got anything? I have anything. Dale? Yeah. 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 Yeah.